In this lesson, you will learn the difference between structural columns versus architectural columns and how to place structural columns. Please note that this whole lesson is task-based and if you haven't actually got the DWG file, you can download it from the following website. The link is also shared in the description. Structural and architectural columns have some similar properties, but a structural column has its own Revit category and can also contain an analytical model which is used by structural analysis software for the actual design. Structural columns can also host reinforcement bar and host structural connections. However, architectural columns are good solutions for early architectural design as walls will merge with the columns and wall layers wrap around the column faces. Additionally, architectural columns can be placed directly over steel structural columns for boxing out or cladding. Go ahead and open up Project A, or you can continue from your previous session. You'll notice here that we have our grid and dimensions created from our previous session, and we're now going to focus on the placement of in situ columns. To begin, we're going to need to see the DWG file to see where the columns need to be placed. And you may remember in our previous session, we created the DWG and placed it in the site plan. So in the project browser, let's go ahead and open up site. The view is currently switched off. So to switch this back on, we're going to use visibility graphic overrides. So on the ribbon, I can select view. And here we have visibility graphic overrides or you can type in VV or VG. In the visibility graphic override dialog box, let's select imported categories. And here I switched off the entire category. So let's now switch that back on. Just to make things a bit easier to see, I'm going to temporarily switch off the grids and we'll switch off layer zero and click okay. So you can now see our DWG file has been reinstated. If we inspect the DWG file, you'll see in this yellow color here, we have column positions shown. Some of the column positions are on grid and some of them are off grid. You can see here we have a column that is slightly off of this grid here. And also we have some columns placed out singularly over here and also some steel columns placed around these radial grids. I'm going to begin by looking at the columns on grid C and we can see here that we have a column position at C2, C5, C6 and C7 and we also have the column off grid uh, on grid 7. So let's begin by placing those. To place out columns we'll select the structure ribbon and on the structure ribbon we can either select column or we can use the keyboard shortcut CL. Let's select column. In the structural column command, you'll note that we now have a context ribbon. On the context ribbon, you can see that we have context panels. So mode, placement, multiple and tag. You'll notice that some of the buttons here have a blue highlight. The blue highlight signifies that these are the active tools. For example, if I didn't want these columns tagged or referenced on placement, I could simply just uncheck that. In this case, I want that tagged. And you can see here we're placing a vertical column, but we would also have the option of placing a slanted column if we wanted. Let's now take a look at the options bar. On the options bar, you'll notice that we can configure the height for our column. You may find by default that the column is trying to be constructed to a depth of here, top of foundation. Now, of course, we can place the columns down from say first floor to ground floor, or we can place the columns from ground floor, which we're on in a minute, and use height to first. Now in our case, we're going to have the first floor all done in in-situ concrete, and the upper floors will be constructed from steel. So our concrete columns only need to go to a height of first. Let's now draw our attention to the properties palette. In the properties palette, you'll see here, we have something called the type selector. The type selector lets us see various different types of structural column loaded into our active project. So I can see here I have three family types. I have circular hollow sections, concrete rectangular columns, and steel universal beams. The gray bar is the header for the family. Underneath the family header, we have the various different types or sizes. 
In our case, we need a section size of 350 by 350. You'll notice here that we don't have any sections appropriate. So I'm going to begin by selecting 300 by 450. And we'll use this just to look at some of the properties when we're placing out columns. For example, if I move over a grid intersection, you can see the grid intersections both highlight, and that's now going to constrain the column to be placed on grid. If the grids move, the column can then move with those grids. If I just want to constrain the column to one grid, I can just move over the singular grid and you can see that will show. This particular column is rectangular in its shape. So if I press the space bar, you'll see that I can actually rotate that column prior to placement. If I move over a grid that's not horizontal or vertical, such as grid eight, and I then press the space bar over this instance here, you can then see that the column will rotate either parallel or perpendicular to that entity. And it's not just grids we can do that with, we can do it with any geometry inside Revit, even AutoCAD geometry. So for example, if I go over this curved grid here and I press the space bar, you'll then see that the concrete column will track the curvature of that grid, even if I'd move it off of the grid and it will then still track the radius. If I move over this skewed wall here, and again I press the space bar, you can now see the element is aligned to that DWG geometry. Okay, so now we've learned some of the tricks we can use while we're placing out columns, we're going to create the correct section size. This is going to require us creating a new family type. To do this, in the properties palette, let's go ahead and select edit type. And in the type properties dialog, we'll select duplicate. And here, I'm going to give this a name. By default, the tags will be placed out using this default name. So here, I'm going to type in 350x350, click OK, and the actual physical sizes will go in under dimensions for base, which is represented with B, and H, which is representing height. I can then select OK, and we're now ready to place out our columns. I'd like to start by placing out the columns manually on grid C. If I zoom into the first position here, all I need to do is move over the two grid intersections until they pre-highlight and then left click to place that column down. I'll then zoom to the next location in here and again click to place the column. Okay, so we're now ready to place this column off of grid. I'm going to place the column down on this grid here. And if we know the dimension, we can directly type it in on the temporary dimension. So if I select this dimension here, I'm going to type in 3325, and you'll then see that that sets out that column. Now clearly, if we've got a column off a grid, we need to document it with a dimension. And even though I'm still in the column command, I can click on the little temporary dimension tool, and that will make that permanent on screen. And we'll move that shortly. Okay, so now let's come out of the column command. To do this, we can select the modifier button up on the ribbon, or I can simply just press escape twice. If I want to move this temporary dimension, I can select it, put my mouse over the dimension line, and then simply drag it to a better location, perhaps here. Let's now look at some other placement methods for columns. You can see here that I have a series of concrete columns, all on grid intersection. So here, I'm going to click the column command again. And now you'll notice here, I have an option to place these at grids. I'm going to begin by using a crossing window. So a window pulled from the right to the left to select all of the vertical grids. And then I'm going to hold the control key down. Notice when I press the control key, I get a plus symbol on my cursor. That means I'm going to add or append to the current selection and I can then select the two horizontal grids. Once they're selected, you'll now see all of those columns being previewed. And to finalize the placement of those, we'll go up to our context ribbon and select finish. And those columns are now placed. I can see that I have a similar arrangement of columns down here. So once again, I can select at grids. I'll use my crossing window 
again pulled from the right to the left to select all of the vertical grids hold the control key down select this grid here and then again on the context ribbon select finish to place out those columns and finally here you can see that i've got a couple of odd ones to place so i'll just place these manually by selecting on the grid intersections Okay, and you can now see that we've placed out all of our concrete columns.